Hey guys, I'm Ed Kimber, the boy who bakes, and I make baking videos every single Friday. So hit that subscribe button and click on the notification bell to be the first to be notified when my new videos and recipes come out. Today's recipe is one that you have been requesting. I posted a picture of this test recipe a couple of weeks ago and you sent me tons of messages asking for a video how to make it. So that's what today is going to be all about. It's how to make the perfect pavlova. So for this recipe you only need a couple of ingredients. You need some egg whites, you need some caster sugar, some lemon juice, some corn flour and a little bit of vanilla. And then for the topping you're going to use some double cream and then a whole bunch of fresh fruit. So one of the main tips for a pavlova is all to do with the egg whites. Now, the best thing to use is old eggs. So not eggs that you've had lying around for weeks and weeks, but eggs that aren't super fresh because when they're really fresh, they don't whip up as easily. So you don't get as much volume. So a slightly older egg white is key. And then the other part that is different from a normal meringue is how you make it. So we're gonna add a little bit of acid in the form of uh, lemon juice. I'm not a fan of vinegar, which most recipes use because I think you can taste it, whereas lemon juice actually has a sweetness to it, so it's quite nice. And then corn flour, and we're going to mix those in at the end because that will give it the real marshmallow texture that the pavlova is known for. Now, the other tip, when it comes to your bowl, this is a metal bowl, it needs to be super spotlessly clean. So I'm going to take one of the lemons and rub it around the inside of the bowl because that gets rid of any excess fat that might still be on the bowl and it gets it means the egg whites will whip up really nice and full. The other thing that you need to have ready is your baking tray. So, nice large baking tray and on the back of the parchment I have drawn a circle, just an 8 inch circle and that means that I know roughly where I'm trying to spread my meringue mixture. It's a real rough guide, it doesn't really matter what the size of this is but it gives you something to aim for which helps when you're trying to get a really nice pretty, pretty pavlova. So, the first stage is to whisk up our egg whites. So we're going to put all of the egg whites into the mixer in one go. And then what we're going to do is we're going to whisk that on medium speed until we've started to form a nice kind of almost meringue looking mixture. It'll start off where it looks like really big bubbles and really loose and there's still kind of a wet mixture on the bottom. And then it will tighten up and the bubbles will become really nice and small. And it's like almost like the bubbles on top of a bath. It's really nice and fluffy. And then we can start adding the sugar in a tablespoon at a time. And once it's all mixed, we're gonna whisk that until it becomes really nice, stiff, and glossy. And then what we're gonna do is we're gonna add about two teaspoons of lemon juice and two teaspoons of corn flour. Add those to the mixture, whisk those to combine, and that is our meringue mixture mix. You also are looking for the sugar to be fully dissolved. So if you rub some of the meringue between your fingers and you can still feel the sugar grains, it's not gonna be quite there. And that also means that you might get that weeping of sugar, those little bits of kind of sugar syrup that come out of the meringue. So nice, slow, medium speed, so that it gets time to dissolve the sugar and still gets that really nice glossy peak. Okay, now that our meringue is really nice and stiff and glossy, and if you rub it between your fingers, no sugar grains, we can add the corn flour and the lemon juice and our vanilla. So what we're gonna do is add the corn flour, and then we're gonna add two teaspoons of lemon juice. Obviously do it into a separate container first because we don't wanna add any of the seeds. Now, a lot of recipes will say to use the vinegar and that's absolutely fine, but I do prefer lemon juice because it tastes nicer, simple as that. And then add about a teaspoon, cap full of vanilla extract. And that's just again, for a little bit extra background flavor. And then just whisk that through until that's nice and smooth. So, now that our meringue is done, we need to spread it onto our baking tray. Now, this is where uh, people sometimes don't get the prettiest, and rough and ready is absolutely fine, but I'm gonna show you how to do something a little bit more pretty and a little bit more sophisticated almost. So, what we're gonna do is take a large spoon and we're gonna put the meringue inside our circle that we've drawn. Now, try and keep it nice and piled high. It will look ridiculously high, but having it in that central portion means it'll be much easier to get a really pretty round shape. So, I'm going to use an offset spatula, and we're just going to very carefully push it down and then keep kind of moving it around so that we get it nice it's all kind of filling in that circle and it doesn't matter if you go outside the circle too much but do try and keep it in that circle and all that's going to do is it means we know 
the size we're aiming for. So what I tend to do is smooth it out like you're decorating a cake, like you're smoothing a cake. Like so. So the sides are really nice and tall and smooth. And then we can start with the decorative siding. I'm just going to literally draw with the side of the spatula along the outside edge like this. Now these will puff up, so I make them quite deep so that when it bakes you still get the definition. Now once it's done, you can totally leave these peaks if you want, I'm gonna leave them, or you can actually kind of brush them back in. But that's basically, that's basically the mixture. Now what we're gonna do is this is gonna go in the oven. It has been preheated to 130 degrees Celsius, and we're gonna leave that in there for 10 minutes, and then reduce the temperature to 90 degrees Celsius, and leave that in for a total of about an hour and a half until there's a nice, crisp, but still white shell, and it feels firm, but it's not got any kind of softness to it. And that means that you'll get that nice, crisp outside and that beautiful marshmallow inside. Now that Pavlova is in the oven, there is nothing more for me to do, so I'm gonna make myself a cup of tea, and I'll see you in two hours. So once the Pavlova has baked, we're gonna turn the oven off and leave it in there to cool down fully. The reason for this is if we bring it out of the oven now, and let it cool at room temperature, the shock of the coolness of the room is gonna make the pavlova crack and kind of crumble. So we need to leave it in there, and let it cool down nice and slowly. Now that it's made, we can actually get on with filling it and eating it. To fill the pavlova, we're gonna use basically just double cream and then a whole bunch of different fruit. I also have some passion fruit to kind of drizzle over the top. Now, these two different passion fruits, the question is, do you know which one is better? Which one is gonna taste better? The really smooth one or the really wrinkly one? The answer is the wrinkly one. The smooth ones are fine, but they don't have the good flavor and they don't have as much juice to them. So use ones that are wrinkly. If you don't have a wrinkly one, that's fine. Leave it in the kitchen for a week and it will become much wrinklier and it will release much more juice and it just tastes a lot better. So all we're gonna do, take our double cream, pour that into a mixer and then just whisk that until it's really nice soft piece. You don't want anything firm, nice and soft. Now with pavlova I tend not to flavour the cream uh, with any sugar or anything else, mainly because the pavlova is going to get all its sweetness from the actual meringue itself, so it doesn't really need any. So all we're going to do is take our soft cream, fill that hole that we made and then top that with berries. So I have a mixture of raspberries, and blueberries, and cherries, and strawberries, and we're just going to mix those all over the place in no specific pattern, just nice and randomly. Right, let's cut into it and see what our finished Pablo is all like. Super crisp, but fluffy inside is the aim. So for me, the perfect pavlova is a nice crisp shell on the outside and a nice marshmallowy middle. Let's give this a go. Mm. So the middle is like soft, light marshmallow. Then the beautiful kind of crisp meringue on the outside. Perfect, perfect summer dessert. So that is how you make pavlova. I know that's a short video, but that's because pavlova, it's very, very easy and also something that everybody can have a go at. So the recipe will be in the link in the corner of the video, um, and you can leave me a comment down below if there's anything else you want to see in an upcoming video.